welcome to Would I Lie to You at Christmas, a very special festive edition that sorts the facts from the fibs. On Lee Mack's team tonight, all the way from the last leg, it's Alex Brooker. <laughs> and a legendary star of stage and screen is the one and only Melvin Hayes. <laughs> David Mitchell's team tonight joining us from the BBC breakfast sofa, it's Naga Munchetti. <laughs> and she's the writer and broadcaster who's chosen to spend even more time with David this Christmas. <laughs> it's Victoria Corrin Mitchell. <laughs> we'll begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, They've never seen the card before. They have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Alex is first tonight. OK. One Christmas, I had to ask the bin men for some of their tip back after I accidentally gave them an envelope containing 500 quid meant for my builder. <laughs> David's team. Oh, right. So, um, when was this? This is about six years ago. I mean, you're, you're evading VAT, that's what you're basically saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not illegal to pay cash. Yeah. It could be that he was paying them, I don't know, £420 plus VAT. Were you paying £420 plus VAT? No, he just wanted cash and earned 500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> so you prepared, like the beginning of a thriller, a second envelope with a different amount in it for the bin men? Yeah, so if I don't see them, I just leave it, I leave it out. On like... the bin? Yeah, like, just, <laughs> just behind the bin, they know. So when did you realise that something was wrong? Well, when I got in and went to pay the builder and it was 20 <laughs> quid. <laughs> what did you do? Just phone up, like, uh, Huddersfield Council. And luckily, they were honest. Right. They were honest bin men. Question from Melvin yeah. Hayes. Uh -huh. As an onlooker... Yeah. <laughs> I believe him. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Melvin. So you ring up the council. Yeah. Cos it's quite difficult getting through to the council, I find, on the phone. <laughs> there's usually a long phone menu. I've never listened all the way to the end, but maybe there's one if you've accidentally given <laughs> £480 in cash to the bin men at Christmas, <laughs> press 9. Yeah. As far as I can remember, it was fairly, fairly straightforward. And what did you say? I just said, look, I'm, I live at this address. And the person said what? You're being very, very confrontational tonight, David. Oh, quite yeah, well. Look at you. You sat forward. Is it because Victoria's here? <laughs> <laughs> You're like a stag stood no, at no. the top of a mountain. He's like this. I, yeah, I, I tell you about this, and I'm like that. <laughs> Showing off in front of your wife. <laughs> yeah. Do you tip the bin men and the recycling men separately? No, it's the same people. On the same day? They no, it's on the same week day. on, week off. One week they're coming and doing the recycling and one week they're coming and doing the bins. So they're there every week. Well, they do the recycling every week, but they take the green every two weeks. Yeah. What about the brown ones? Well, they go every week. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my brown ones don't. My no. brown ones go every two weeks. Do they? Right. Blue every two, green every two. What are you putting in two. your brown? Well, I'm putting my garden waste in my brown. Yeah. What's in your green? My normal. Green recycling, brown food waste. Oh, no, no. no. Brown, food brown food brown waste is in a small green one that you have no. to have Small to brown yourself. one. Small grey one. Ah. No, not to you. <laughs> Welcome to a brand new BBC show, Scenes from the Care Home. <laughs> So what do we reckon, then, Victoria? I see, I don't think anyone just leaves £20 on a bin in the hope that the right people will grab it in the morning. What do you offer your bin men at Christmas? <laughs> oh, it depends, what, <laughs> depends what time of day they turn up, Rob. <laughs> I also cannot believe that anyone doesn't know the difference between £500 in an envelope and £20 in an envelope. Right. Unless you are so minted that you just don't care. <laughs> so you can say lie? We think lie? Yeah. We think lie. Yeah. Lie. Okay, Alex, they are unequivocal in thinking it's a lie. Was it a lie or was it actually true? Well, it was... a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Alex didn't ask the bin men for their tip back. Uh, Victoria, you're next. 
For our first Christmas together as husband and wife, David was startled by one of the gifts I got him. <laughs> Please, T. <laughs> it wasn't making a noise inside the wrapping paper, was it? <laughs> um, what, a puppy? Well, I was thinking more of a rabbit. Uh... <laughs> so, I suppose the big question is, what was the present? It was, you'll like this, Lee, it was some sexy underwear. Oh, why would I like that? <laughs> no, I, I'm always telling Victoria how attractive you find me. <laughs> Who was to wear the underwear? It was... I bought... for David to wear. Look at David's face! <laughs> So, it's for David, describe the underwear. <laughs> this is very awkward. <laughs> I, for what describe the... I mean, this is genuinely, this is... Well, this it... is the stuff of nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> if it helps in any way, I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> so, David was broadly of the school of... I mean, is this...? <laughs> <laughs> this... <laughs> this... This is... This is dreadful. <laughs> Single for a long time. Oh. They've got their they've got their loose cotton boxes. They don't think, oh, I tell you what, I'll have a pair of these snug fitting trunks. Can we can we just oh, is that what we're talking about? So not we're not talking about straps and things and <laughs> we're not talking about res restraining bolts and things like that. <laughs> Nothing like that. No. I'm just gonna say, if at times in the future when I face adversity, I will look back and say, well, at least I'm not going through this. <laughs> Can I just say something? Yes. This is so much better than dustbins. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's Christmas morning, it's your first Christmas together as a married couple. You hand him this package, he opens it. Talk us through the moment of realisation. He sort of went, oh, it's underpants. And then he realised they were a bit clingy and possibly, in David's mind, somewhat French, you know. <laughs> How long did it take before he wore them? H has he ever worn them? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> From that day forward, that was his new style of choice. So, even as we speak, he sat there now with something... <laughs> with something cli clinging to his midriff. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it wasn't like his main present, there was other stuff? There was some other stuff. Can you remember anything else that you'd got? Yeah, you know, yeah. some books and a DVD and... What were the thing. books? Well... <laughs> the Bible and Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> So, uh, Melvin, what do you make of this? I'm just excited. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think? Truth or lie? I just... So, what do you think, Alex? I can imagine you'd definitely be startled by it. But I just... Well, I, that bit... I... Yeah. If David's worn the same pair of pants all of his life until that moment, and I, I suspect just... he The has. same pair the of pants. Same... <laughs> the same type of pants. <laughs> I think it's true. You do? So, Melvin thinks it's true, Alex? I hope it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that it's true. OK, they think it's true. Victoria, was it true or was it a lie? It is... ..true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Victoria did startle David with one of her Christmas gifts. Melvin, you're next. I was once given just half an hour to learn how to drive a double-decker bus along the edge of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> What's this all about? <laughs> David's team. When was this? It was in the 60s. And for what purpose? What was this for? Well, it was for a film. W which film was this, then? It was called Summer Holiday. Summer Holiday, yeah. <laughs> I was on the edge of this mountain road uh, and there was a sheer drop. You couldn't see the ground below. And the director said to me, if I wave my left arm, you're too near the edge. <laughs> if I wave my right arm, 
you're too near the wall of the cliff. <laughs> and I drive straight at him, and when I get within 50 yards, he takes out a loud halo and says, <laughs> we're zooming in for a close-up. Try and look frightened. <laughs> <laughs> and all I could think of, I looked behind me before I did, and there were these famous faces looking at me. Who was there, Melvin? <laughs> there was a young man called Cliff Richard. There was Eunice Stubbs. There was the shadows. What well, the shadows that they cast? <laughs> <laughs> and you genuinely, they only gave you half an hour to learn to drive a bus. Yeah, because I wasn't Cliff. Cliff Richard, I'm talking about, not the Cliff. <laughs> Can I ask you this question? Eunice Stubbs said of that film that she found it impossible to remember the plot or any of her lines because Cliff Richard was so beautiful she couldn't stop staring at him. <laughs> Did you have that problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Naga, what do you think? It's so plausible and it's a brilliant story. Too brilliant to be a lie. Victoria. Summer Holiday is one of my all-time favourite films. Somebody gave an unforgettable performance as the bus driver. You decide if that was Melvin Hayes or not. <laughs> I mean, I think the only question about the plausibility of this at all is whether you had so little training for that scene. <clears throat> and, frankly, we all have quite a prejudiced view of the past. And so I think we can all believe that, that in that era of filmmaking, they were that careless with talents of your magnitude. So, um, yes. <laughs> well said, well said. So, they, <laughs> uh, they think it's true. Melvin, was it true or was it a lie? I am so sorry. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special celebrity guest, Patty Boulay. <laughs> Victoria, what is Patty to you? This is Patty. When she starred in a pantomime of Aladdin, I was in the same production. <laughs> right. Naga, how do you know Patty? This is Patty. When we appeared on the Pointless Celebrities Christmas special, we both failed to identify someone from a picture who's in this room. <laughs> oh, right. And, David, finally, what's your relationship with Patty? This is Patty. At a Christmas concert, she handed me a mince pie to cure my rumbly tummy that was ruining Silent Night. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we have it. Lee, where will you begin? So, Victoria, when was this? Sometime in the 90s. But you weren't an actress, were you? No, well, it was a non-speaking role. Oh, what uh, was the role? I was the lion. Oh, you're in a costume? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where the lion yeah. features in that classic story of Aladdin. Well, <laughs> as I say, it wasn't a big role, and I'll be honest, I was only in it one time. What happened was, I was telling a friend of mine that I had never seen a panto before, and she worked at a newspaper, and she said, oh, I can probably get you some free tickets to that. And uh, I said, great. And then she rang me back the next day and said, better still, you can be in it. <laughs> you see, it was a promotional stunt. There's a lion that is in the show every night and it's in a costume and it was... Oh, my goodness! A lion! Ah! Well, oh, my goodness, a lion! What's that doing in Aladdin? <laughs> <laughs> and who was Patty playing in this? Patty was, of course... Of course I, she was Miss Aladdin. Miss Boulay, I should say, was the principal boy. Who else was in it? What other names? I'm glad you asked me that question. Dennis Waterman. <laughs> and Barry from Heidi High. He was the dame. Right. So, was there a regular line that you replaced? <laughs> yeah, I think there was always a line in it. That... Played by the same person every night. Well, I don't know. I was only there one time. Did you not I never... ask if you're putting someone out of a job? <laughs> it was all a bit of a blur. Dennis Waterman sang the minor theme tune. 
Barry from Heidi High said, I'm off to Burger King, mine's a Whopper. And then there was a bit... <laughs> I think you're telling the truth, cos I knew Barry and he was his whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like to quiz next, Lee? Uh, Naggett, could you tell me how you know Patty... That's Patty Boulay! <laughs> could you tell me how you know Patty Boulay? We appeared on a Pointless Celebrities oh, yes. Christmas special and one of the rounds involved identifying people. Right. And one of the pictures was of someone on this stage. Right. Were you... And we failed to identify them correctly. Well, tell you what, don't tell us who it was. Tell us what the question was. Is that how it works or pointless? You had a picture screen right. that you looked at and there were something like um, nine pictures. Yeah. And they were all of famous northerners. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> so it's me? Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I think from memory, you can't get help off Patty. No, but in the celebrity one, you can. Everyone so whispers. You can get help off Patty. So even Patty doesn't know who I am. For God's sake, Patty, when you walked on, I went, where? Lee, sit down. <laughs> right, you know before when I said, oh, my God, it's Patty Boulay. I, I don't want that in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want you to use this instead. <laughs> Who's that woman stood up? <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> so who did you think Lee was, then, when you made the guess? <laughs> if you say Brad Pitt, I'll forgive you. Jimmy Nail. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think we need to ask David about his. <laughs> this is one of the best shows we've ever done. <laughs> Here's a question. Had it been a picture of Rob, if, it was the, if the category was Welsh people, would you have recognised Rob? Of course. <laughs> You've done Pointless, haven't you? Yeah. So, with Pointless, you have to get the least... If it was the least recognisable yeah. person... So you, you'd you, get you, you fewer had to go at Lee. You'd get, <laughs> you'd get fewer points. Well, well I mean, it sounds like a very good idea. strategy. So no, I, I would have gone for him as well, actually. <laughs> what I love most about this is, even if it's a lie, she mm. still says she thinks you look like Jimmy now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That's the worst bit. <laughs> no. Spot and that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, Lee. Can here's the thing, Naga. We, we've we've managed to find uh, a picture of Jimmy now. Now that. <laughs> well, yeah. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> Can we put that next to Lee? <laughs> well, well, well. All right. Are you happy to move on to David? <laughs> David, remind me, please. Well, Patty handed me a mince pie at a Christmas concert because my rumbly tummy was making a noise over Silent Night. <laughs> was ruining it. <laughs> uh, uh, was Patty on stage singing? No. Where was she? She was next to me, listening to the concert, holding a mince pie. Where was <laughs> this, David? <laughs> it was at the Royal Albert Hall. Oh, right. lovely. I don't care about any other question than the one I'm going to ask. OK. Did she recognise you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I don't know. She, she seemed to. Uh -huh. So, it... no. Yes. <laughs> Is there any significance about the word silent from the silent night to the rumbling noise in your tummy? I, I think there is significance there, yes. I think that the rumbling... Because Silent Night, obviously, it's, it's horrendously mistitled. What they, they should say, Quiet Night, <laughs> because it is obviously audible and it wouldn't be the successful carol it is <laughs> if it were entirely silent. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, it's one of the quieter ones and the noise my stomach was making would have been less of a problem during, say, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Pe people often are. <laughs> Did you see me near the front? 
No, you didn't. I didn't say that. We were in a box. Oh. What was the occasion? It was like a, a BBC hospitality thing. Your stomach was that loud that it was audible for... It was actually ruining the performance. I don't Patsy. think it was audible throughout the hall. <laughs> <laughs> What sort of noises was it making? Because stomachs make yeah. a variety. It could be a gurgle, it could be a whine, it could be all sorts of things. Just recreate for us using <laughs> using that versatile tool of yours. Um, oh, oh, no, I thought, <laughs> I, thought I'd use my, I thought I'd use my mouth. But OK. Just um, recreate for us the sort of sounds that Patty would have heard. I think there was sort of... There were... <laughs> and Patty heard this. Yeah. And proffered a mince pie. Yeah. Was she sat behind you or in front of you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Was she sat to the side of you? That's it. <laughs> right so next to me. She was right next to there. you. Didn't I ask earlier if she was next to you and you said no? If I did, I was lying. OK. <laughs> right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team, is Patty Victoria's panto pal, Naga's pointless partner or David's pie provider? Let's take them individually, shall we? Right. So, Victoria. We like her. Well, we like her, but... <laughs> we're not, we, can't, we can't just judge you by who we like. I'm just a bit worried, cos she's been standing there a long time. Yeah. She's liable to fall over. <laughs> but what the audience don't realise is you're stood there, don't forget. <laughs> What do you think about Naga not recognising me on Pointless? I can understand that. <laughs> I wasn't sure until the Jimmy Nail comparison. And then you and thought... Then I was like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was... I mean... I, I thought she nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> then there's David. <laughs> That's a very woolly story. <laughs> well, it's a lovely woolly time of year, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> so, who, who do you think is telling the truth here, Melvin? I think it's a very difficult game. I didn't realise. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it to the public vote. <laughs> I think it's... I think Naga. <laughs> uh, I think there's an obvious explanation, and that is that Naga knows who I am, but she forgot her glasses, so let's go with that. <laughs> It's Naga looking at a picture of you. Thinking I'm Jimmy <laughs> Nail. <laughs> OK. Patty, would you please reveal your true identity? Well, I'm Patty, and the lovely Victoria was in the same pantomime <laughs> as me. Yes, Patty is Victoria's panto pal. Thank you very much, Patty Boulay. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's Lee. One Christmas, after spotting them stranded at the side of the road, I let a couple called Mary and Joseph stay the night. <laughs> <laughs> because there was no room at the Premier Inn. <laughs> David's team. So, where, where did you spot Mary and Joseph? Uh, it's in a place I used to live called Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> it, where I live, just near where I live. I was yeah. driving home and um, just saw them looking very cold. Just a man, a man and a woman. And a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> a man and a woman stood at the side of the road. Yeah. She Luggage? Was oh, well, she was heavily pregnant. <laughs> Were they hitching? No, they were just sat on a, on a bench looking really cold. You just stopped and asked some people on a park bench if they wanted to come home with you. No. <laughs> You've not started doing that again, have you? <laughs> the window was down, then we stopped at the lights, and they... You it was know, we? Did you have someone else with you? Uh, no, I was having a wee in the car. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I looked out the window and, uh, you know, they gave me that look. They went, hey, Jimmy Nail! <laughs> 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 I just had a bit of bounce, you know, right? How's it going? Yeah. Oh, we're freezing. Why? Because they were near the Premier Inn. I said, we, we, we couldn't get in. It was a mistake with the booking, and now we don't know where to go next. So, you have the window down in the car. Yeah. So, you have the passenger window down, do you? Why? Because you looked that way when you said, hey. I was reversing. <laughs> Sense. 
I recently bought my new American left-hand drive... <laughs> ..Mustang. <laughs> so it's not just no room at the inn and they're called Mary and Joseph. Mary is pregnant. I can't <laughs> confirm that, and I'm reluctant to say on television well, in case I... she's watching. OK. Can I ask you, did Mary give birth to a messiah while staying <laughs> at your house? No. No. But, uh, so, so it's so, three oh, people visited with gifts. <laughs> so they get into the car yeah. and you go back to Mac Towers. Yeah. Yes, the gates swing open. Mm -hmm. You go up the crunchy gravel driveway. Yeah. What Draw, happens drawbridge next? comes down. Yeah. <laughs> drawbridge comes up. Well, obviously not, otherwise I'd have gone straight into the moat. <laughs> Let's just move on to the portcullis. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the big front door of the yeah. house. What happens? Uh, so then I I go in because I've got my own key now. She's finally given me a key. <laughs> and um, and I go leaving in. Mary and Joseph in the car. No, no, they're in the stable in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and the children rush out. Father, father, you're... who's this? No, no, they were in bed. It was Christmas Eve. Did I not mention that? Well, how, oh, what time Christmas was it? Eve. About. 10.30... What were you doing out at 10.30 on Christmas <laughs> Eve? In your Mustang with the window down, <laughs> driving slowly along the curb. <laughs> oh, Lee, 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 no! <laughs> I'd forgotten my wife's present and I was looking for a late-night garage. <laughs> to get her something special. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like a giant galaxy and a bunch of carnations? <laughs> Did you find out what Mary and Joseph, what they did for a living, where they lived, anything uh, about them? I think he might have been a carpenter. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, yeah. what he did. I know she... I think she may have been a jockey. <laughs> <laughs> well, when did they... Where, when did they go? Because presumably the next morning... <laughs> <laughs> when did they leave the house, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they left the next morning early when my mate Brian came round. Brian Herod. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we? What do you reckon, Naga? What, what, what do you think? I don't believe any of it. You don't believe any of it, <laughs> Victoria? What are you thinking? I think it's not true because of the no. words that he spoke. Yes. All right. So your whole team. <laughs> A solid on that. Yes, I, uh, I think it's yes. It's not true. All right, yeah. Lee. They think it's a lie. Was it a lie or was it actually true? It was, in fact, a lie. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Lee didn't let a couple call Mary and Joseph stay the night. Oh, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team has won by four points to one. Ah, well done. Right, Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.